Hi, Philip Eaton here again to talk about Vectrex and Forth. So if you watched my last little video, you saw that I managed to get uh, Camel Forth, or Vec Forth as I call it, with uh, my Vectrex BIOS extensions. Uh, managed to get that running on my Vectrex with a serial terminal run connected to my Vec Fever. Um, and I showed you the interactive mode and made it draw a few things on the screen uh, and on the terminal. So I've got my own little working interactive computer like we had back in the day in the 80s. So, how about writing a game on it then, making something show on the screen? Well, I haven't really done much of that, and uh, in the last couple of days I, I did actually put something together. It doesn't really use any vectors at the moment, it's really just text, but nonetheless, it's better than nothing, and it does show that everything is possible. Anything is possible, maybe. Uh, so, what is that game? Well, well the game is, a, is actually something called 2048, which, if you've been paying attention, you'll know that Thomas Sontowski released, a, I think it's a free binary with this game on it, where you can slide tiles around, they add them together and play the little game, and it's a fantastic little game, I love it um, I downloaded it on my, my Android computer, uh, Android phone I should say and my top score is you can see it, one second let's uh, bring my camera up there it is my top score is it's not going to focus is it there you go, 57152. I don't know what your high score is, but you know, that, that's the game. You can see you move tiles around, up, down, left, right, and add the numbers up. So, how did I get that working on the Vectrex? Thomas has already done it. He's made a fantastically smooth version with nice music and everything like that. Uh, I'm not trying to compete with that. I'm just trying to see if I can write a game and, and uh, learn as I'm going along. Um, I'm not a master yet in Vectrex, but hey, maybe one day. So the version I'm using, as you can see in front of me, is actually stolen from Rosetta Code. So if you go to Rosetta Code, it's a fantastic website. It's got 2048 the game written for all these, well, written in all these different languages. As you can see, there's a ton of them. Um, you um, you might recognise the one in C if you read that. Um, anyway, I'm interested in fourth, so I'm going to click here. By the way, my mouse cursor doesn't seem to record very well with this recording software I've got. Um, so you just have to um, um, make up the difference between where the cursor is and where where I'm clicking. So I'm clicking on fourth and this is going to show you the fourth code. So this is 2048 written in fourth. Um, as you can see it's four or five pages of code. Now, and that's what the game looks like when you play it. It's, all, it's on a text terminal, it's not meant to be graphics or anything, it's just it's just a, a conceptual kind of thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, copy this code here. And this one here it will run in G4, so it works with G4 version 7.3. I've got 0.7.3, I've got version 0.7, but it seems to work okay. So I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to run GForth. I'm going to paste it in. No, I'm not. Let's try again. Copy. Paste it in. Okay, so GForth has just, I've just pasted it into GForth, and as I was typing, as I was pasting it in, it's compiled it on the fly. Um, and I can run this using, um, well, the first thing I need to do is init and then that shows me the screen and then I run main loop main dash loop and I'm in the game mode so what you're finding is I've got uh, J and K, you can move these numbers around, if you know how to play um, this game you'll know what I'm doing, I'm running it using a Dvorak keyboard so I don't know what I'm doing here I'm just pushing keys that I know, J, K, L and something else that, that move the things around so that's the game playing with G4 Okay, now, how do I make that work on the Vectrex? So, you've seen the code here. Um, now, the Vectrex is running forth as well. Um, but it's a different system. It's using a ROM. It's a ROM-based system. It's using vectors. Um, when you power the thing on, the whole thing on GeForce is running out of RAM, whereas the Vectrex has a little tiny bit of RAM. You're not going to compile that lot in there in one go. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the Vectrex um, window, and we can, we can have a look at forth on there and see what I can do with it. So I'm going to do cold just to start from scratch. <coughs> now, um, what have I got next on my list here? Yes, so you've seen the the, um, the hello program in my previous video, if you've seen that. So what I'm going to do now is show my Vectrex code. And this is basically the same code. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half screens, 304 lines, which is basically 2048 um, running on the Vectrex. Now it's a bit different to the the one the one for the D 
the G4 that I mentioned because there's some changes. Let me just uh, bring up Beyond Compare and we can have a look at what they are. So this is going to show me the differences in the code. So where there's a red piece, you can see that's where I've changed some of it. The main reason I've changed these is, is as I mentioned earlier, we've got rommable fourth code on the on the Vectrex, whereas it's all running out of RAM on in GeForce on a PC. Um, additionally, um, there's a few things in GeForce that you just don't have on the Vectrex on on Campbell Fourth um, because it's not as new. Um, for example, Query Do doesn't exist, so I had to modify that slightly some areas so where you've got a query do I've had to replace it with a, dupe, a query dupe if um, and then a then statement at the end uh, what else have I had to do uh, there's no case statement on the, on um, camel forth that I'm using so I've had to use a nested if then else statement um, maybe I'll implement case one day when I get around to it and query dupe as well because they're quite handy have we got? Yeah, most of these changes are due to query do. So there's not actually that much change in the code, to be honest. Um, I've changed the keys that you're using because I'm using a Dvorak keyboard. I've, I've decided to make it so I'm using the numeric keypad rather than uh, K, J, H, and L because they're in weird places on my Dvorak keyboard. Um, and also, I don't want it to to um, finish at the command line. No, no, actually, I do. So don't worry about that. Um, so as you see, there's there's a few differences. Additionally, I've had to modify or tweak it a little bit as well because I'm using a vector monitor. Um, Whereas the G4 version runs on the terminal and it prints the screen up and then it just waits for you to press a key, um, that's clearly not going to work on the Vectrex because the screen's going to disappear. So I've had to change it a little bit so the screen doesn't disappear. And that's using. Where is that bit? Uh, it is. I don't know where it is. I could find it, I'm sure. Actually, oh no, I'm showing the wrong code. That's the wrong one. This is version 024. What I actually want is... So draw is the original version that's used by the terminal version, and X draw is the version that's used by the Vectrex. Um, so that's the difference. And you could actually run it on both. Actually, you could run it out of the terminal as well as on the Vectrex at the same time on the vector monitor. Um, that's what I was doing when I was testing it. Um, so yeah, this is this is basically the same code. So let me close that down. And close that down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compile it. Uh, my button's at the top here. My cursor is not. Not showing you my, my arrow is not showing you which button I'm pressing very well because it's it's off to the right, uh, off the left for some reason. Anyway, I'm going to compile it. As it compiled, and then I'm going to send it down to my Vec Fever. Let me just reset my Vec Fever. Bring the camera up. There we go. <coughs> okay, so it's going to wait for me to send down some code, which I will do. This button here, click and send. Put it here. Run, run the Vec Fever. And I've now got my fourth prompt back up. So I can do things like hello again. Bad timing, hello. Uh, put my camera on so you can see it. Remember that from last time? That's a little hello world, a hello world program. What I'm going to do now, oops, escape to end. That's what I'm going to do. There we go. Right, let's see if we can run 2048. Now, what I can do, what I need to do here is go, um, I'll just type go, don't do I think. Yeah, there we go. So, you can see I've got some numbers there, and I'm going to play it now with the cursor keys on my physical keyboard. So I'm going to do that there, 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 eight, two. Now I don't 
exactly if you know how this thing works, but basically that is the game of 2048. So I've got these two twos you can see here and here, and then two together, and then the two, oops, let's go across there, two and four. So if I could bring this two fours over here, it look a bit sort of flashy here. Um, it's actually flickering like hell because it's not very fast uh, because I haven't done any optimization with it whatsoever. Um, what you're seeing here is the, the little flickers here and there. I'm seeing a lot more on my screen. So anyway, you can see it's basically working. And if you know what 2042, 2048 works like, this is it. So what I can also do is pause the program. And I can do, for example, draw which will show it on my screen if I wanted to I could go and tweak tweak the memory addresses so if I did um, grid that will return me the address of the grid and I could do 20 dump for example that will show me the contents of the memory that's storing that grid so I could actually go and change one do I really want to do this? not going to risk it but basically I could, I could change things in this grid and change the numbers and then do things like that um, and then I can run the thing back up again. I can continue where we left off into main dash loop, for example, which is a bit that's waiting for a key. Um, and I don't know what I've done with it. Maybe I can't think I've crashed it um, by fiddling around with it. But nonetheless, you can basically see what's going on here. Let me just uh, reset that. Send it back down again using my. Send it back down, click, run, and that's me giving it a reboot. So I can then do, um, if I really wanted to, I could do init, and that then I could uh, show my screen there, and then I could do main loop, and run that part of it, like so. And then you'll see it on the Vectrex again if I bring my game up to it. You'll also notice the numbers are in exactly the same place as well, and that is because. That is because it's the random number generator started from exactly the same place. So clearly, I need to randomise that a bit more by using um, a timer um, on the key press or something like that. So as you can see, the game's running. Um, it's it's running from not running on the terminal at the moment. It's running on the Vectrex screen. Um, and what I need to do is add in joystick control because I haven't done that yet. Um, got to do a bit of experimentation on there because I've not done anything to do with the joystick at all yet. Um, that's it. Maybe I'll speed it up a little bit, I don't know, probably not, and it's just a proof of concept, um, but it allows me to step onto something a bit more interesting, and now I've got a bit of Vectrex mileage under the belt. Okay, of course I've got my list here. Oh yeah, so the code at the moment um, is all on my machine, I don't have it set up with GitHub yet, or Git, or with GitHub I'm using just personal backups. Eventually I'll get onto GitHub, so if you really want to have a look at it, you can do, um, but not right now, because it's not ready, and there's a few gotchas in there um, that... that um, I mean, it's not really fit for human consumption yet. The code's a bit of a mess. But nonetheless, it's working. I'm happy. And um, that's it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.